Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will solve some of the leading questions which are asked in CSWIP 3.1 exam. So this is as per the new exam pattern. Uh, before uh, starting this video, I would request you to please join my channel. If you have subscribed my channel, then you will see a join icon. And by pressing that join icon and by paying a very small amount, you can become a member of my channel and you can support my initiative financially. So our first question is during a transverse tensile test, the first stage the specimen goes through is known as the, this is the question one. And as you know that in leading questions, they ask two questions. The second question will be the supplementary to the first questions. So this is the format of leading questions in CSWIP 3.1 exam. So the question number 1a, which is uh, related to question 1, is the with reference to the previous questions, this question, and the correct answer, what is reached at the end of this stage? So our question is, during the transverse tensile test, basically either it is tensile, uh, longitudinal tensile test or transverse tensile, tensile test, the first stage will be the elastic stage. See here, during tensile test, a curve is plotted and that curve, curve is called as stress strain curve. I have taken this picture from my website weldingandentry.com and from this curve you will get to know the uh, properties of the material like at the start that is from 0 to A the elasticity will be there that this zone is called as elastic zone or elasti elastic stage. In elastic stage, the material regains its original shape after removal of the load. So in tensile test, you basically apply some load and that load pulls that material apart and after a certain point of time, that material will break. So what happens during the first few seconds or first few time, uh, first few moment, the material undergoes through an elastic stage and in that elastic stage the material has the ability to regain its load if the to regain its shape if the load will be removed and after the elastic stage the plastic stage will initiate in plastic stage the material will deform permanently means material will not be able to regain its original shape so after elastic stage yielding starts Yielding is something what the material will not be able to regain its original shape after removal of the load and after some time UTS will be reached. UTS is the ultimate tensile strength that is the maximum stress or maximum load which the material will be able to sustain before breaking. So this is the stress strength curve and the first stage will be the elastic stage then plasticity will be uh, will uh, then plasticity will start and after elastic slash elastic stage the yielding will start and yielding is uh, yielding is done in plastic stage so the answer will be elastic stage the question is the first stage the first stage will be the elastic stage now the second question is with respect to the question and correct answer correct answer is elastic stage what is reached at the end of the stage means after elastic stage which stage will come next? So after elastic stage, yielding will happen. That is C, yield. As I told you, after elastic stage, yielding will happen. In yielding, the material will not be able to regain its original shape. That is also plasticity, called as plasticity. So option C is the correct answer. Here I have given the explanation. If you want to read, pause the video and read the explanation. And here the question of explanation of question number 1A. Now we will move to question number 2. Which of the following is the odd one out? So 4 options are given and you have to choose the odd option means which, which uh, one will not be similar to other 3 in some respect. You have to choose that one. And question number 2 is with reference to the previous questions means this question. What is the common underlying factor in the formation of all the welding crack types listed above mechanisms? So these are the mechanisms for welding cracks and among all the four cracks, what is the common factor which is responsible for the crack? That you have to give the answer in question number 2. Here. First we will solve question number 2. The odd one out is hot cracking. Why? Because the first three options that is underbid cracking, cold cracking and HICC. 
here this is HICC, not C dot HICC. This is C is wrongly written. This is HICC. So underbit cracking, cold cracking, and HICC. All these three cracks are developed after the welding has solidified means after the welding has solidified and the material has reached to the ambient temperature or cold temperature or uh, it has uh, you know solidified and it has reached to ambient temperature so after few moments after few hours or after few days even after few years these cracks may develop so after solidification of the welded molten weld pool these cracks will develop it may develop after one day it may develop after one year it may develop after many years but hot cracking is developed soon during the solidification of the molten weld pool that is why this is the odd one out now the common factor which is applicable for all four cracks all four crack mechanism is stress normally crack happens any crack that crack happen when the internal stress of the material increases then crack happens so the common factor is the stress here friends if you want to understand the mechanism of underbit cracking cold cracking hydrogen induced cracking and hot cracking if you want to understand these mechanisms you can watch my ccip 3.1 video lectures in my ccip 3.1 video lecture i have explained each mechanism in depth because this is a part of your ccip 3.1 uh, video uh, ccip 3.1 syllabus hence i have explained all these mechanisms in my CCP video lectures. Here the explanation is, is given. If you want, you can pause the video and you can read the explanation. Now question number three. What does the 70 represent on an E7010 AWS 5.1 classified electrode? And with reference to the previous question, what type of flux coating does this electrode have? Which electrode? Electrode C, electrode E7010. So what type of flux is having in this electrode is the second question now we'll solve the first question what is the meaning of 70 in e7010 electrode so if you'll see a smaw electrode numbers are given at the start of the electrode here you can see the numbers in red color i've taken this picture from my website weldingandentity.com so these numbers are nothing but the uh, names of the electrodes or the codes of the electrode or nomenclature of the electrode. It is like E6013, E7010, E7018. So these numbers have some meaning. Like the first two numbers, first two digits, that is 70, will represent the minimum tensile strength when multiplied by 1000, means 70 into 1000, that is 70,000 psi will be the minimum tensile strength of the weldment which will be which will be the welding which will be done by this electrode so the minimum tensile tensile strength of the weldment which will be done by this electrode will be 70000 psi friends at this point i want to ask you a question what is the full form of psi here psi is a unit you have understood and I want you to write down in the comment box the full form of the PSI. This will encourage me to work more and more for you if you answer the questions which I asked during the videos. So you have to write down the full form of PSI in the comment box. Now, question number three, what is the electrode covering or the flux coating of E7010? So friends, E70 in E7010, the last two digits combinedly show the flux covering. So 10 represents high cellulose sodium, means it's a cellulosic electrode. 10 represents high cellulose sodium and 11 represents high cellulose potassium. So here the explanation is given. You can pause the video and read the explanation. Now question number four, which of the following units is used to measure energy absorbed in char charpy impact testing? So as you know, charpy impact testing is used to measure the toughness and the unit is joules so answer c is the correct one joule is the unit which is used to measure the energy absorbed in charpy impact testing and with reference to the previous questions in this question what does this test tell which test 
the charpy impact test so what does the charpy impact tells us test so charpy impact uh, test is about toughness it tells the toughness here if you read the four options the option a is more appropriate and in this option it has written its toughness at low temperatures so mostly the charpy impact test is done to measure the toughness and most of the time it is done at low temperature hence the most appropriate answer is a its toughness at low temperatures now question number 5 which element has the greatest effect on corrosion resistance and question number 5a this is a with reference to the previous question and the correct answer what other materials from those listed is used to make a cryogenic steel so first one is which element has greater effect on corrosion resistance so it is nothing but the chromium c option 2 is the correct answer chromium see what happens chromium forms a passive layer of chromium oxide on the material and that passive layer of chromium oxide prevents the material from the atmospheric oxygen and other things which develop corrosion on the material so this chromium oxide layer which is formed due to the presence of chromium prevents the material from corrosion hence the correct answer is chromium and one more thing this chromium oxide layer is self repairable means if the chromium oxide layer will be uh, removed by scratching or by damage then that layer will again be formed if chromium is there in the material and this is the this is the main advantage of chromium that is why in stainless steel there will be chromium and that chromium on stainless steel forms that chromium oxide layer and it prevents stainless steel from uh, formation of corrosion now with reference to the previous question and correct answer correct answer is chromium what other material from those listed is used to make cryogenic so chromium is already there you have to answer among these three means among the three manganese nickel and carbon what is most suitable for making cryogenic steel so for uh, making most suitable cryogenic steel nickel is the material nickel will help in uh, corrosion resistance so option 2 is correct nickel so here the explanation is given if you want you can pause and read the explanation friends with this we have come to end of our today's video i hope you like our today's video and friends i would request you if possible please join my channel and support my initiative this helps me to you know to work more for you thank you very much